that fight, great one. All right, let's talk about Nathan Cleverly um, versus Badu Jack. Nathan Cleverly should retire. Um, I remember me and Ryan post Nathan Cleverly from Faro, we had like a little argument, debate, whatever you want to call it. He said Nathan Cleverly should retire then. And I was like, what? No way, look, he put up a great fight against uh, from Faro. And I think Ryan alluded to the fact that he was scared about his, his macho-ness, in a sense that Nathan Cleverly was fighting in the pocket too much, almost trying to prove to people that, you know, I've recovered from Kovalev, I can take a punch, I'm not a pussy, for, for want of a better word. And I, I kind of disagreed a bit. I said, no, look, um, Fanfaro at the time was a top five light heavyweight in the world, probably still around the top 10 now, Fanfaro. And I think Nathan Cleverly done very good against him, caused problems and showed that he can mix it against the fringe world title guys. So the guys in and around from what, six to 10, Nathan Cleverly could definitely chuck his name in against those guys and mix it. So I was saying he shouldn't retire. Um, and at the time, what, he was 28 years old. Why retire at 28? I mean, there's still potentially hundreds of thousands of pounds, if not millions, that he could make in big, big fights. Um, I go back on that now. Well, not go back on it, but now after watching the Badu Jack fight, I think Nathan Cleverly probably should call it a day. Um, and it's no shame. Nathan Cleverly's had a good, really, really good career. Um, look, when, when people start fighting, their aim sometimes is to win a Southern title sorry, seven area title, then maybe you, you get an English title. Some people don't even reach that, hundreds, thousands, thousands don't even reach that. So when you get to the pinnacle and you win a world title and then where he is now in terms of a world regular title, you've had a good career, you fought on big stages, you've had big fights, Cobbler was a big fight, Billy was a big fight, from Faro was a big fight, this, Badu Jack was a big fight. Um, but watching him yesterday, especially me having watched Badu Jack against George Groves and James the Girl, um, and how he struggled somewhat against them. I've um, got a draw and a split decision. Um, I thought that Cleverly might be able to do a bit better against him. I don't, this is Badu Jack's first out and as a light heavyweight. Um, he, he does look physically strong. He actually looked bigger in a sense, not taller, but bigger than um, Nathan Cleverly. So I wonder actually if he boils himself down or did, if he boils himself down from a high weight class that Nathan Cleverly does. Because he actually looked physically stronger in there. Um, remember, he's 33 years old as well, Badu Jack. He's not a spring chicken. Um, so Nathan Cleverly is actually younger. And in terms of who's got more miles on the clock, Badu Jack's been through some tough fights as well. So going into the fight for me, it was kind of both were even in terms of where they are in their careers. Yes, one's on a high, one's sort of done very good super middleweight, but regardless, you're entering a new division. And I gave Cleverly a round, but then he started to get bullied and beaten up. Cleverly was a very good boxer. I thought Cleverly has a really good jab. Um, I thought Cleverly had a bit of pop in the right. Um, he's got good foot movement. But he seems to want to just do this macho thing too much now. This macho thing of standing there and trading. And I don't know if it's because he wanted to almost prove something to Badu Jack that you're the smaller guy. You're coming up to my weight division. This is my belt. You're not taking it. We can stand and trade if you want. When you just don't need to do that. You've watched the girl and grows against Badu Jack. You've seen what's given them success. Some people may argue they're better boxers, but I kind of, I don't know. I think I think Cleverly is as good a boxer sometimes. Maybe not. Maybe just a level below them. Both of those had good amateur careers. But you've seen what kind of works against Jack, and you've just lost sight of that, and you try to go to war, and. Um, it didn't work and you've been stopped by a guy coming up from 168 which doesn't look good i think the problem for cleverly right now for me as well is that i look at the 175 division and it is a bit stacked it is a bit stacked um and i don't know where what route you'd go next from even to become or potentially get another regular title or or, or, or a, a fringe belt if if Andre Ward vacates because he's going to have too many um, mandatories to deal with. There's guys out there that don't have belts that will destroy him. Barrera will destroy him. Um, um, Berta Beard would eat him up and spit him out. And there's others. There's so many. There's so many guys out there in the 175 division. There's potentially other guys coming up from 168 as well. So, I don't know. There's no big domestic fights from at Light Heavyweight. I think I said that yesterday. There's no 
massive European or Commonwealth fights for him. So I, I don't know what you do. He got paid pennies for this fight as well. So for me, look, you, you call it a day. You, you really do call it a day. Um, he's tried to go up to cruiserweight. Obviously, he's way too small for cruiserweight, way too big for light and for super middleweight. He's stuck. And I think if you're stuck in a rut, unless you can maybe switch trainers, he's 30. Potentially, you could switch trainers, um, try something new, um, look for a more defensive fighter. He's, he's a smart guy, Nathan Cleverly. So I think maybe he could find a, a trainer that could maybe work on his faults and maybe improve on his, on his good bits, because he does have good bits. But then, again, he goes back to his default setting, which is stay in the pocket and fight. And a, a guy with his, his length, his size, why are you staying in the pocket? Why are you not using your jab and circling? It just doesn't make sense to me. And I feel like, unless he figures that out, just call it a day.